Hey everybody, my name is Pixel, and welcome back to another episode of Selene Apoptosis. Now, if you remember the last episode, we got one of the endings. We went and to help our acquaintance, and what did we find? We found an abandoned house with somebody dead. Still don't know the reasoning for that ending, but we are back to the last choice that we made. And this time around, we're not going to answer the call. We're not going to interfere. We're going to stay home. So let's see what happens whenever we do that. Sweat broke out on his upper lip. Ethan closed his eyes. No. Ethan said it with a firm clarity. All the following words that came out of his mouth were more and more quiet until his lips moved silently. No, I'm sorry. I can't help. I'm so sorry. He really was sorry. Sorry about his former life. Sorry for himself, desperately to the point of his stomach clenched with a painful spasm. Sorry for Hope. Sorry for the poor rider who was being dragged deep into a cold vortex of darkness. But what could he, Ethan, do against that darkness? He failed. Maybe he had the skill to get the answers required, but they were buried too deep. At that death, the, wa the water turned pitch black and there were things in the blackness Ethan didn't know the names of. Didn't want to know. He took a deep breath as if he was actually about to dive. Then he deleted the email. <laughs> we deleted the email. <laughs> the letter with the title, Untitled, disappeared into the dark vortex. The frantic, terrified pleas for help were erased, leaving no trace as if they never existed. No, it's not like that. We're just deleting emails, you know. We're leaving people to fend for themselves. Hope once told him, it was a bad time for Ethan to recall this, the information on the internet doesn't really disappear after you click delete. Most often it remains somewhere on the servers and you just lose access to it. You turn the mirror to the wall and pretend like it's your fancy. There was nothing wrong with the reflection. In that case, the silent scream didn't vanish. It was now trapped. Trapped where no one could hear it. I'm so sorry. Ethan covered his face with his hands. Hey, everything's back to normal. No freaky eyeball paintings. The mirror on the wall of Ethan's dark bathroom was reflecting a closed door. It wasn't now. Ah, the mirror is reflecting what it's supposed to now. Ethan and Hope got an official divorce three months later. They never talked about everything that happened. But what did actually happen? Over time, the horrors you experienced got erased from memory. Fade, weaken, such are the defense mechanism of the human psyche. Poor Ethan. He just he just went mad. Celine caused him to go crazy. Dad loves you and never stood silently at the head of your bed, clutching a pillow in his hands for some reason. When you were eight, Uncle Jeremy didn't take you behind the barn, didn't show you anything or make you show anything. The grandmother's old wig does not and never has had any long spider legs. Ethan Syke had notably suffered, but it was playing by the rules still. He wanted simple, coherent explanations, and he knew where to get them. Dr. Laura Stein was the island of clarity and sanity, and the horrors, as Ethan has discovered, fade from memory much better if you break them down into phallic symbols. Ethan wished he'd had started therapy sooner. Who knows, maybe most of that nightmare could have been avoided. The police never figured out what happened, but even the clumsy versions suited Ethan much better than what he remembered. What he allegedly remembered. Well, damn. Ethan had some sort of messed up childhood, that's for sure. Week after week, Ethan felt like he was gradually recovering. Of course, he had to give up his career as an independent consultant in favor of a more predictable office job, but at least he had the money for proper therapy. At some point, a small incident happened. Dr. Stein introduced an electronic registration system. As it goes with the electronic registration system, something went wrong on the second or third week. It turned out that three people had an appointment in the same time slot. Mr. Quinn's, Mr. Harrison, and Mrs. Merlees. The meeting felt awkward at first, but the tension faded surprisingly quickly. By mutual agreement, Mr. Quinn's was the first to go to Dr. Stein's office. Ethan and Hope were left alone on the couch. They were both smiling, a little tense, but overall happy. 
Since they met like that, they decided to go out for coffee and talk about various things, because they hadn't spoken in a long time. Then, at some point, they decided to hold hands. The next day, they were hardly keeping their eyes open, because they only managed to sleep for a total of three hours. And that was inevitable, as in a relationship, you always have to sacrifice something. Wait, is she back? Who was that? Hope leaned over the arm of the sofa and looked at Ethan curiously. He shrugged. A literary agency. One of the few I haven't disgraced myself in front of yet. <laughs> They're looking for enough of a boring guy to be their historical consultant. Their working schedule is something about a whole day and most of the night, seven days a week. So what did you say? That I am happily employed office worker and I heartily enjoy cooler water. Are you serious? Ethan, don't be silly. We both know this is your true calling. I understand this kind of work takes a lot of time, but you could quit the office job and... I could, but I don't want to. It's my turn to bring the mammoth to the cave. What about your calling? I know well enough how hard you work to make this startup of yours survive. Who will make a homeless cat tender, if not you? <laughs> well... Actually, there is quite a variety of animals in our database. You'd be surprised. Recently, somebody has booked a mini pig. A mini pig? Like, an actual pig, but portable? Yeah. Well, kinda. The mini part just stands for just a hundred pounds instead of a good old six hundred. People get crazy over cute piglet photos and think this is it, but in reality... Wait a minute. Don't try to change the subject. I didn't even think about it. Hope sighed, frowning. I don't want to give up. I don't want you to give up on your dream. I'm not giving up on anything. And anyway, I do understand that Miss Merlees won't marry an ordinary office clerk. But I have a plan. Oh, come on. A sofa cushion slapped against Ethan's cheek. Hope tried her best to look serious, but she was too pleased to pull it off. Besides, she was burning with curiosity. What's the plan? I'm writing a book on mythology. Wow. So now you are not only a popular history, history consultant, but also a talented writer? Guess I'll start getting used to this thought. Ethan grinned. Something of that sort, yes. And what's your future bestseller about? What? It seemed to hope just for a brief moment that Ethan's eyes became round and shiny pools of black knacker. Uh-oh. We've seen this before, haven't we? Only... Oh, whoops. Get out of here. We've seen this before. This is what we saw in Hope, except Hope's actually reacting to it now. The Chthonic Gods of Ancient Greece. Are these them? Are these the Chthonic Gods? With the one, two, three. Oh, that's, that's a creepy smile. I need glasses. Ending four out of six. Wow. So that... With that ending... We... What is this? Blue Lights Hotel. Do you want to go back? Do I want to go back? Do I want to go back to how things were? So that was ending four of six. I'm guessing to the last choice is just about answering or not. Yeah, that's that's what that is. And I think with those two endings right there, I think that is where we are going to end this game. This was a fantastic story. I really feel like we still did not get the full story of what's the deal with Celine? Why was she tormenting Ethan like that? I mean, I guess that you would have to go all the way back and play a whole different path. Like, maybe you lie to Hope the entire time. You know, maybe that'll lead you down a different path. But these are the two endings that it gave us. This one and the one bef that we got in the last episode. These are the ones that we get for, you know, being truthful. Being cognate of everything. And you know what? 
I think I'm happy with it. You know, I think I'm happy with that ending right there. Because you know what? At the very least, at least we got hope back. At least, at least we were able to be forgiven. And we got our wife back. You know, even though it looks like we're not ourselves anymore. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really enjoyed this this series. This was fantastic. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell. I've always got series coming out, so you can always stay tuned and check them out. If you liked what you saw, like the video. I will definitely be down to create more content like this. So thank you guys again so much for watching. I will see you in the next episode. Bye now.